So hey, let's say hi to Sana, that she's coming here right now. <laughs> Thank you. Woo! Thank you so much. Yeah. Oops. Hi everyone, my name is Sana Bedi and I'm here from the UNICEF Venture Fund team uh, to share with you a little about what we're doing with our crypto fund as well as our blockchain ex explorations um, and how that's doing at UNICEF uh, so far. So really to get started, um, as we're confronted with new realities uh, on how technology as well as how digital solutions can impact the lives of children, what we're really seeing is still half the world is not connected to the internet. Oops. What we're also seeing is that when digital solutions do exist and the digital solutions that we find in the market are not necessarily always built to solve critical challenges uh, that are addressing children and their communities. And, and, and that, that does become a little bit prob problematic, also because when these, when these solutions are developing and when we are seeing digital uh, platforms be developed, we're seeing that many times they're at the expense uh, of the most marginalized. Their voices are not heard, um, their data is not reflected in the systems, and they're, they're essentially getting more and more left out in how, developing, uh, in how digital solutions are being developed. And also, when we do see digital solutions exist, so when we're seeing the right digital solutions be present, many a times they're blocked uh, behind proprietary tech, which makes these solutions more and more inaccessible, uh, leaving them behind and leaving them uh, with not getting access to what they should be. And so that's really what we at UNICEF are trying to solve. We're trying to see that there is this missing gap. There is this gap where uh, solutions can be made more accessible, services can be made more accessible. Uh, and we're doing that by three things. By piloting and developing solutions that are more accessible. By ensuring that we're investing in entrepreneurs as well as in problem solvers that are often overlooked. And third, by driving venture capital to markets that don't see enough of such funding. And so uh, at the UNICEF Venture Fund, uh, we really invest in early stage frontier technology solutions. Uh, and we do this to accelerate innovations that we see as promising for the lives of children. And then what we really aim to do is invest in disruptive tech because we think that that's the intersection of technology that can impact a large number of lives. And so our team at the Ventures office at the Office of Innovation uh, in UNICEF really looks at tracking emerging trends and identifying new areas of exploration where UNICEF can make a mark. Uh, and we do this by investing in virtual and augmented reality, drones, blockchain, of course, uh, artificial intelligence, and data science. Oops. Uh, here, so here you'll see a map which has got, to date we've made 124 investments across 74 countries. Uh, the pink dots in the map really represent the female founders that we've invested in. So 43% of our portfolio is actually female-led companies. Um, and as I mentioned, the goal is to invest in these early stage solutions and make them fundamental open source platforms. So the little uh, check marks that you see are certified digital solutions. We have currently 11 of these uh, in our portfolio. And to do this, we provide startups with funding in two ways. The first is through our seed funding. So that's $100,000. The second is through our growth fund. Promising solutions have the opportunity to get additional funding up to $400,000. And companies are able to receive this investment in both fiat as well as cryptocurrency. And in its current form, we uh, provide investment in Ether as well as Bitcoin. And of course, the companies receive a one-year um, you know, mentorship and ex tech ex expertise uh, guidance over a one-year period. And the fund's investment thesis really then is looking at two main approaches. The first is to invest in solutions that can directly impact the lives of children. Uh, Roomsan is one such company, and you'll be hearing from the founder more tomorrow as well. Uh, they've actually developed a digital cash and voucher assistance management system, and they will be providing cash transfers with our country office to 1,500 families in remote Nepal. The second sort of investment thesis we have is that to invest in solutions um, 
that are really core infrastructure. Uh, and Statwick, a company from India, a blockchain-based solution, is one such example. They've really developed an end-to-end supply chain tracking system. And with UNICEF, the use case was really focused on tracking vaccines all the way from manufacturers to consumers. But they're now using the same platform to be able to track agricultural produce for the Indian government. And so we're really seeing that our portfolio, which is 124 investments, uh, has been able to reach 31 million beneficiaries. We're also seeing that fund companies have been able to raise $27 million in additional follow-on funding after receiving that initial investment from the fund. 8% of our portfolio also made successful exits. So what we're really seeing is while fund companies are being able to position themselves as key leaders in making social impact, they're also being able to develop financially sustainable solutions, um, which are you know, positioned as open source financial platforms. And that's what comes to what makes the fund model unique. We invest in local solutions because we believe local solutions are the best way to solve local problems. Uh, we're seeing that our companies are driving private capital to uh, innovating for children. As I mentioned, 80% of the company is generating revenue, 70 million, 17 million has been raised in follow-on funding just by the startup portfolio. The 43% of our female-led companies, less venture capital goes to women. And we're happy with the 43%, but we're really striving to get to a 50% gender balance. Uh, we also have, then, the most important, our crypto fund. It is still the only uh, and the first crypto mechanism in the United Nations system where we're able to accept, hold, and disperse cryptocurrency uh, through the fund to our startups. And finally, everything that we invest in is open source. Uh, and that's because we believe open source is more scalable, more adaptable, and more accessible. So the crypto fund was actually launched exactly three years ago at DEF CON in 2019 with the long-standing, uh, of course, the long-standing commitment uh, and bold partnership with the Ethereum Foundation that made it possible. We're now coming to what is the end of the prototype period, so it was a three-year prototype launch, uh, and we're really hoping to institutionalize operations from the crypto fund so that we're able to continue making uh, and bringing these results that we've got. So the crypto fund was launched as uh, really a mechanism to help UNICEF build its institutional muscle memory on how to operate in crypto, but also on preparing for a digitally financed future. And we're really seeing that we've actually been able to come against uh, and show results against the initial sort of indicators that we set up for ourselves. We're seeing that 100% of our transactions are transparent uh, and can be tracked. We're seeing uh, also that we're able to make those transfers in a very less period of time and also spending less than a percent on transaction fees. And so we've seen that 35 uh, investments that we've made in the past three years were companies that actually received investment in crypto. And we're hearing, of course, a lot on the benefits from the, from the startups themselves as well, uh, on how they've actually benefited in terms of just financial reporting, in terms of ease of transparency, as well as just hiring the very best talent across, uh, across the world. And so we will be also announcing a new uh, cohort of investments that will be receiving uh, crypto, crypto funding later this month. I'm also happy to announce that we have with us Xcapit, a gamified savings uh, platform, again, a blockchain solution. Uh, they are actually the very first contributors to company to contribute back to the innovation fund. Uh, while the, the amount is not looking significant here for UNICEF, this is a very momentous time. Uh, and that's really because we're seeing how a portfolio company can contribute back to the growth of the fund. And finally, we invite you to collaborate with us. You can collaborate with us with your expertise and mentorship in building open source communities. You can also provide mentorship directly to a select few startups. If you're a startup, we will be launching a new call for applications, and this is going to be for climate tech solutions. The call is going to be out later this month, so stay tuned. And finally, co-invest with us. Join the venture fund, partner with us to really contribute in building uh, digital public goods that can really impact the lives of children in more ways than one. You can write to us directly at the venture fund at unicef.org or else uh, check us out on social at UNICEF Innovate. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure.